10 minutes, a life is lost to rabies. It did not only bite my son, it bit six others. But my son was the only one who was sent to the hospital and the only one who died. Rabies affects the rural poor and marginalized populations and kills tens of thousands of people each year. Currently in the world, about 70,000 people die out of rabies every year. Treatment for those bitten can cost 40 days of wages in some countries. It's quite expensive. How many patients are willing to buy a drug for 250 Ghana cities? The solution to this sounds very simple. The solution is these dogs, these cars, there should be a policy to vaccinate, systematically vaccinate all dogs and sensitize communities which have gotten, who have dogs that are strayed. My name is Seth Kwame Boatin and today on Hotline, I will be telling you how so many lives have been lost to a preventable disease such as rabies and how the seeming negligence on the part of the authorities is spawning the problem. I will also be telling you how you can prevent your dog or cat, which may be your best friend, from becoming your worst enemy. Dogs are human's best friend. Some even regard them as family members deserving to be treasured cared for and loved. Dogs have what some animal experts say is an unconditional love and friendship that many people cannot get from other humans. They are very loyal and trustworthy. It is the reason 25-year-old Stephen Boachi Adam cannot go through his entire day without spending time with his dogs. I love them because they have this soul. I think they are there only pet or the only, uh, only animal that have a bit of soul and they show some unconditional love. Because I remember once I came to the house, I mean, after school, when I came to the house, I was very sad, very down. But immediately they saw me. I mean, they brought a bit of joy into my heart. So at that moment, I just forgot about everything. And I can trust a dog rather than a man for security. Because a man can betray you, dogs cannot. Within the twinkling of an eye, the tables can turn, and that best friend can suddenly become the worst thing that ever happened to you. That is when it is carrying rabies, a deadly but preventable viral disease. In fact, dogs are the source of up to 99% of all rabies deaths and transmissions to humans. As head of public health at Ghana's veterinary services, Dr. Bashiru Boy Himoto explains. Yeah, rabies, you know, is uh, a viral disease that uh, is transmitted through bite of an infected warm-blooded animal to another. For example, the commonest in the developing world are dogs followed by cats and then monkeys. The bats also carry rabies, but uh, the, the Mokolo rabies virus, which was isolated in Nigeria, was caused by a bat. We have not been as able to isolate that one here. So it is a, 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 an infected animal that can only transmit it to another infected animal. The rabies virus shuts down the entire central nervous system, but gradually, according to scientists, the virus travels along nerves to the spinal cord until it gets to the brain and multiplies. It then locates other nerves and travels along those nerves until it hits the salivary glands and then into the saliva. It is almost always fatal when the virus reaches the brain and the spinal cord. But once it enters the hypothalamus, which is the center of your breathing, center of taste, center of uh, motion, all those things that we do, it's all controlled by our central nervous system. Actually, the center itself is the hypothalamus, the small brain stem inside the brain. Mm. So that is, once it enters the all functions that involve coordination, you know, which is movement, taste, you know, sleep, 
briefing, all those things that are controlled from that central university will all be affected. And that is why sometimes it manifests itself at the last stage of paralysis of the truth, of the voice box, it cannot even make noise. Uh, sometimes they go into coma. Uh, sometimes they, uh, they, they, they attack people because there are, two, there are actually two types. We have the aggressive and the non-aggressive type. Yeah, so the aggressive ones are the ones that most of us know. But the silent ones, they are not all that. You may have a dog that is very good, uh, it's very aggressive, and all of a sudden it becomes very dull. And, you know, it doesn't know the owner again. Orientation is not all that. So you can be suspecting that suddenly. But it's not, it doesn't attack people like the aggressive one. The dog will only start biting people if the virus attack on the brain and spinal cord makes them aggressive. At this point, it forgets about its owner and can even bite to kill. Such deaths are preventable. Unfortunately, last year, we lost about 50, more than 52 people in Ghana from rabies, from dog bites alone, <coughs> from our records. We realized that uh, from Ashanti region alone, we lost over 24 people. I mean, Western region about six, Eastern region about five, Upper West about four, Upper East about four, Brown uh, I think about one. I think a student traveled to Kumasi. Yeah, a student traveled to Kumasi and went back to burn her food and then that later. So would you say last year's uh, figures were the highest or we've had worse situations before? No, 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 no. In Ghana, so far as our records are concerned, I think last year's figures have been too, uh, too much. The death toll from rabies may not be that much when compared to other diseases, but head of public health at the Konfonochi Teaching Hospital, Dr. Denis Lai says the numbers can be tricky. It's a disease that kills everybody who gets it. If we look at numbers, it's nothing. Because last year in CAP, at the Confanochi Teaching Hostel, I think we had about 11 or 12 people dying from rabies. Now, if you compare that to malaria or, or, or stroke, for example, that kills a lot more people. So if you want to look at the numbers, nobody will do anything about it. But I am looking at the fact that everybody who gets it dies, and the fact that it can't be prevented. If we eliminate it in the animal population, then it's not going to happen to, to human beings. So human beings will not get it. So that's the key thing that we need to look at. The Ashanti region, the third largest region in Ghana, was the hardest hit region last year. But that is surprising when you consider the fact that there are approximately 327,000 dogs in this region. So why does Rebis want to depopulate that part of Ghana? What is going wrong in that region? I head to that region for answers. My first port of call is the Ashanti Region Office of the Veterinary Services, headed by Dr. Kofi Kwansin Filsin. He knows exactly why the Ashanti Region is one of the worst hit. Well, the status of rabies in the Ashanti Region, I would say, is a bit, uh, it's a bit uh, frightening in the sense that. Uh, we are unable to vaccinate the huge numbers that we were doing about some 15 years ago through the rabies campaigns that we was organized in the past. Now people bring their dogs to the lab or even to the clinics only on a, on piecemeal basis. You know, people volunteers guess how they come, they bring in with their dogs. But uh, what we see is that we have been we are able to cover only less than 10% of the estimated dog population well, in the in region, region, in Ashanti region. Estimated for just about below 10%. And if you vaccinate just about less than 10% of your, your dogs in a region, and I think it means that a lot of these uh, dogs that can be rabid out there, and then we are seeing a huge increase in this uh, dog bite cases all over the place. Some studies have established that rabies is a global threat and half of the world's population live in endemic areas. Also, more than 80% of deaths occur in rural areas where access to health education campaigns and post-bite prophylaxis or treatment is limited or non-existent. 
Africa and Asia are the continent with the highest risk of human mortality, with more than 95% of the world's fatal cases. In the Ashanti region, Dr. Kwansin Filson notes that the human rabies cases that were reported happened in the rural parts of the Ajosu Draben municipality and the Ashanti Akim North district of the Ashanti region. Most of those people who die from this rabies are mainly the children, the youth. Why? It is because that we suspect that many a time they do not, they do not, uh, the bite, the, the, the maybe dog bite them, but they won't report to their parents for fear that they'll be beaten. And then secondly, because children are the people who are normally, normally send or take care of these animals. And then when they are beaten, they don't report. And uh, I don't know, looking at the gender too, it's mostly, it's, it's inclined to the female. Really? Uh, uh, female, you find that the figures, when you look at the figures coming up, it's mainly the women and then the elderly. This has been confirmed by the World Health Organization. It actually states that almost 40% of victims exposed to dog bites are children under the age of 15. I do an hour and a half's journey from the Ashanti regional capital of Kumase to Agogo where rabies cases are rife. My mission is to understand why dogs are gaining notoriety here. I have come to Ashanti Achim Agogo in the Ashanti region. In this town, there are quite a number of people who have lost relatives to rabies. Stray dogs, their own dogs, um, did that to them. They bit their people. They couldn't get help for them, medical treatment for them very early. So they died. One of such relatives um, is Sule. Sule lost his sister about two years ago. Her sister was only 32 years when the incident happened. I'm here to speak to Sule about how it all happened and what lessons they have learned from that. 41-year-old Sule Atubiga lived happily with her sister and her four children in this long-abandoned factory on the outskirts of Agogo. But a rabbit dog, their own pet, bit and killed her sister. The dog was their guard until one day when, without any provocation, it bit a child and his sister. The dog had never been vaccinated. My sister owned the dog. It was very young when she brought it in. Strangers, including school children, could even come here and play without any attack from the dog. Shockingly, one day, one of the children came here and the dog attacked him and bit him. I wasn't around, so my sister quickly intervened and got the dog chained, but in the process, it also bit my sister. The child, who was the first victim, was rushed to hospital for an anti-rabies vaccine. The woman, however, thought hers was not any big deal. So she only chewed cola nuts and rubbed some of it on the wound. In some parts of Ghana, it is believed that cola nuts is able to perform the same function as tetanus injection as well as anti-rabies vaccine. Sully tells me that however did not work for his sister. Initially, she did not feel any pain, so I left and went back to the north to do some work. Later. They informed me she was complaining of pain in her arm, so they rushed her to the hospital. That made me calm down. She died in the evening of my arrival. I saw her before she died. She kept shaking her head like how dogs do it. She simply could not stop shaking her head. I was told that is how they behave when they are dying of rabies. She was just too young. She 
she managed to call Sule's name when he entered her circulated ward. She died right after that. The responsibility of her four children are now on Sule. Men come nowhere close to what women can do. Women are good when it comes to taking care of children. Have you ever seen chicks following a booster before? It does not work like that. It is always difficult for men to take off children when their wives are not available. Women, however, have the skill to do it. So it is not easy for me at all. Now, I am thinking of how to take off the children she left behind. Here is a void that can never be filled because there is no other love in this world like the love of a mother. The saying goes, that you cannot stop the birds of sorrow from flying over your head but you can stop them from nesting in your hair that is the reason Sule and his family have decided to absolutely cut all ties with dogs it is hard for some to believe a tiny virus can enter into a dog to cause this havoc in circumstances like this they conclude they are enemies with supernatural powers rather killed their relative but use their own dog as a medium. 60-year-old Chaymen can can relate. He lost his 12-year-old grandson, Kwesi, to rabies. It was his own dog. It wasn't as if it belonged to another person. It was a very loving dog. As soon as it hears the sound of my car, it runs out to meet me. We have still not come to terms with how a bad spirit managed to enter it to do this to my grandson. It was a very young dog and it behaved like a human being. It wasn't a bad dog, rather a very calm one. How a bad spirit entered it to scratch it and kill the boy remains a puzzle. So this is how it all started. The dog suddenly disappeared from home. It came back after a week. Young Kwesi, the owner of the dog, ran to welcome it after days of intensive search for it. Unfortunately, instead of playing with Kwesi, Mr. Mensah says the dog rather started scratching him. Instead of sending him to hospital for an anti-rabies vaccine, Kwesi was rather sent to health worker in their town for anti-tetanus injection. I did not take it very seriously because it was a mere scratch and not a bite. So when I returned from work and they told me he had already been injected, I did not bother again. I felt if it was something serious, they would have referred him to the hospital. We however started noticing some changes in him after some days. He started gazing at things in a weird way. We took him to the hospital and a number of drugs were given. After some time, he started collapsing, so I took him to the hospital again. The doctor brought a bowl of water and asked him to look into it. He had developed a phobia for water, so he could not look into it. We were referred again to another hospital and that was where they told us he had either been bitten or given scratches by a dog. Anti-tetanus injection was not what Kwesi needed immediately. That's according to Dr. Anthony Enimel of the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. You can give your anti-tetanus, as I said, if you think it is deep and infected, but don't substitute anti-tetanus for anti-rabies. Direct them to where they can get the anti-rabies and to start as early as possible. It became clear to them that Kwesi had rabies and all the signs he was manifesting were signs of rabies. He died a few days after. What makes me sad and cry always is that Chrissy destroyed a box in my room. That box is still there and it is positioned right in front of my bed. Anytime I see that box, I start shedding tears. Oh, Chrissy bro, why? You have brought back my pain. You have reminded me of something I can't stand. Is it wrong? 
Life has never been the same for Mr. Mensah and his family since Kwasi died. They have still not overcome the shock and they wonder if anything can soothe their pain. Kwasi's mother left him in the care of his grandparents when she had to join her husband in South Africa. Little did she know that Kwasi's life was going to be terminated by a puppy. Rebus is totally preventable and I think one death from rabies is one death too many. No child, no adult, no one must die from rabies. This is something that can be prevented. Yes, it is preventable. Yet across the world, rabies kills 144 people daily. Most of its victims come from Asia and Africa and Ghana is not an exception. Ascertaining how the rabies virus attacks dogs and cats it's another hard nut to crack. But in the Asante Akim district, the only veterinary officer here, Roland Atenan, has a fair idea about why the disease is rife. You know, this part of the, the country is a bit deprived. A lot of farmers. So they do a lot of hunting. When they go to the bush to hunt for Akrantia, for grass cutters and the other one, they encounter hyenas, other Carnivorous animals, uh, monkeys, kankani, uh, these wild cats. In attempt to catch them, they also bite the dog. And the dog, I mean, they are relatively, they are the reservoirs. The reservoirs of, they are already harboring the disease. They transmit it to the dog, the dog comes to the house, the dog bites another dog, and the chain continues. That is the real source of the problem. And I'm getting problems here because of the, the geographical position of our place. We have a lot of farmers, a lot of people who go hunting. And they are the people, unfortunately, they are the people who do not understand why they should vaccinate their dogs. Why? Yes. Because they see, like you talk about superstition and the myth, they still think when you vaccinate your dog, it can catch, it cannot catch, you know, the game. And that is the problem we are facing. Rabies is endemic in this part of Ghana, but sadly, Mr. Antinan is the only veterinary officer in this huge district handed the Herculean task of fighting the spread of this deadly disease in the Asante Akim district. Because you are coming here, today there is nobody at the slaughterhouse. I don't know what is happening at the slaughterhouse here. I will get a lot of endemic disease, zoonotic diseases too over there. So every day I have to get to that place. Now that you are coming here, I have to trunk it. I have to stop that place. One person cannot fight it alone. Rabies, you have to move to the villages. You have dog bite cases. The hospital people are calling you left and right. And I'm the only person here. Like you can see, look at the hospital, the, the, the office. Is there the table and the chair? This is what I used to fight with rabies. One person. I requested for national service personnel. But for all you know, they are not vets. They, they don't have any, they don't know anything about vet. So you still have to, ra to rally around with a poor rickety motorbike. And so it's a difficult challenge. Both human resource, logistics, and a whole lot of it. Just one person doing the work of about a hundred veterinary officers. What happens to this community when he travels or when he's sick? Certainly, Zoonotic diseases, which are diseases that can spread between animals and humans, as well as rabies, will have a few days. It appears the story is almost the same in other parts of the country, as Dr. Bashiru Boikikimoto, head of public health at Ghana's Veterinary Services, reveals. We don't have a lot of veterinary doctors in the country. Currently, we are just about 68 veterinary doctors throughout the whole country. Really? Yes. And we have over 680 para vets, that are the technical officers. So you can see that the veterinary professionals and staff professionals are actually inadequate for Ghana. The Ashanti Regional Veterinary Director, Dr. Kwansin Fielsen, is certain a lot more rabies-related deaths are not even reported. What we are seeing are the deaths in human beings from rabies is rising, it's on the increase. Many are not reported to us, we know, because in the rural area, for him to even come and tell a vet or to tell the medics, they don't do that. So this is an issue that we need to look at. We veterinary services 
the department are really concerned. We, the veterinarians, are concerned. Because we have the, we have the solution. The solution is by vaccination. For two decades now, nobody has bothered to activate the solution. So the rabies virus keeps spreading and terminating the lives of especially children. I have leads that another child has died of rabies in Bonyre, a town in the Ajisujabin municipality. It is just about an hour's drive from Agogo, where I am now. I set off to investigate how it all happened. Luckily, it wasn't too difficult locating the mother of the victim. She is called Ernestina Fredia Ajiman. I found her in a saloon on the outskirts of Bonyre. Ernestina had traveled on a dog. In fact, a puppy bit her six-year-old son. She rushed back to Bonyre to seek medical attention for him. They went to hospital all right. But she reports the doctor said it wasn't a big deal since it was just a bite from a puppy. The question, however, was that rush your son back to the hospital when you see the dog behaving funny. Unfortunately, by the time they got home, the dog had been killed. Veterinary officers say under no circumstances must a dog which has bitten somebody be killed. Dr. Bashiri Boy Kikimoto, head of public health at Ghana's veterinary services, explains why. When you go to the hospital, I'm explaining this one so that my colleagues in the clinics to also know. When they bring the form, you take the form and take care of the person uh, with the, uh, the initial care, maybe tetanus and other things. Then you now redirect the person to come to veterinary. When the person can, we now ask him to go and bring the dog. Then we now have the form the second form from B. Then we now bring the dog, then we'll keep the dog for our, at our place and quarantine for about 14 to 17 days. If the dog does not die, then we now issue the other form to the medical doctor that this dog has no rabies. At the veterinary headquarters in Accra, there is a quarantined area where dogs suspected to have rabies are kept for observation. Dr. Bashiru Boy Kikimoto leads me there. From afar, we could hear some barking already. I am sure they have heard footsteps heading towards their area. There are about six dogs under observation today. They are here because they have bitten people. They have been monitored for at most 10 days. If any of them has the rabies virus, it will automatically die within the 10 days. In the case of Ernestina, because the dog was killed, she did not have the chance to monitor it and see if it behaved funny as the doctor told them. The dog had rabies, but the symptoms had not manifested before it was killed. Two months after, Ernestina's son started complaining of severe headache. He was rushed to the hospital again. It got to a point that when you try feeding him, he will not even open his mouth and even attempt putting your fingers in his mouth to bite. When you are there with him, by the time you realize, he would have grabbed your fingers to bite. When the doctor came in, he could not even locate any of his veins to give him a drip. He found a vein later, but after a while, the drip stopped. He then started foaming. My son requested for a calipo drink. I got him one, but he was just biting his teeth and could not even open his mouth. He started shaking his legs and started barking and behaving like a dog. I did not know my son was dying. I could not stand that. I was also gasping for breath. I never thought he could die like that. My son was on my laps when I heard an audible exhalation as final breath was released. My son died. The foaming, shaking of the legs and phobia of water were signs that the boy's central nervous system was shutting down. As Dr. Joyce Lendami explains, it is a very painful moment. It's quite terrible when you see them having the phase where they actually behave like a dog. Where they are, they are very aggressive, the patient becomes aggressive, the patient might bite you. And these are patients who must be nursed in an isolation unit, which is also another problem, but I don't think we'll go there yet. This must be nursed in an isolation because they are a risk to other persons who see them. They are a risk to their family members, they are a risk to their healthcare providers as well. And this is how terrible, and they die a painful death.
and I don't think anybody would want to see any person dying from rabies. Painful death, how? It's painful because they are convulsing, you cannot touch them, they are aggressive, and then finally they go into a coma and they just die. And I understand some back. Some may bark, like I said, in the, um, they have the dog, they behave, actually behave like a dog and they may bark. And who would want to watch their child or their friend or relative behaving like that? I think it's terrible. And, and you said they, they get scared of water, anything liquid. Why? I'm not, there's no particular reason, but it's actually one of the signs that will make you determine that this person may have rabies. They just have this fear of water. They may even have difficulty with swallowing because even the muscles will go into spasm. So it's difficult to breathe and that they just succumb. Dr. Samuel J of Dagogo Presbyterian Hospital had to take care of one of such cases recently at the facility. The patient we had, he was, he looked a bit agitated when I saw that patient last year. Mm. I tried, he couldn't look at the fan. The fan, and he was not uh, comfortable with the fan. Mm. Just ceiling fan. And then the lightning system, he couldn't look up. And then I began to be suspicious. I tried to give ice water, a cup, a cup of water. And he was having spasms in the pharynx, pharyngeal spasms. He couldn't drink. So immediately, I suspected that this would be a, a case of release. Doctors say the most painful and saddest point is when the victim can clearly see that death is beckoning and wants a confirmation from you. Dr. Anthony Enimel of the Confronochi Teaching Hospital says it is heart-wrenching. There was one instance, and I remember so well, when I think an eight-year-old boy was asking the doctor, so am I going to die? Now look at this very, and the guy was very intelligent, asking you the doctor, you know the guy is going to die. So he knew about rabies, right? Yeah, I mean this time we read about it. So he knew, and he was asking the doctors, am I going to die? And the answer was, I mean whoever, it was very difficult to respond, because you know the child was going to die. But you ask yourself, what has this 8 year old done wrong to die of a disease, to cut short his life so impromptly, just because those of us who could do something to help did not do anything. He can't expect an eight-year-old to take charge of his own life. It was he was in a normal community playing, and a stray dog came. That boy, young boy, went in to play, and then he was scratched. And even for a long time, nothing was done because again the community assumed that well, this is just a scratch. But then it turned out that the child's behavior changed. The child who wasn't aggressive became aggressive. But when it gets to that stage, there's nothing you can do about it. And indeed, the child died within a few days of being admitted. It is still difficult for Ernestina to accept that a dog took the life of her only child. It bit six others, but my son was the only one who was sent to the hospital, yet the only one who died. <laughs> In 2015, 57 people died of this preventable disease in the whole country. Remember, once the symptoms start showing, doctors say it is an automatic death sentence. The speed with which one will die depends on the place of bite. Dr. Bashiru Boyki Kimoto, again. It is a, a, a slow moving virus through the nervous system. It takes time, but depending upon the site of bite, that's where the rabies will show uh, quickly. Because if it is uh, through the central nervous system and it bites you around your neck area or your, your jaw, you get the central, the hypothalamus very, very easily. But if it is on your foot, it takes time to move. It's a slow moving virus through the nerves to the central nervous system. So we always say that uh, wherever the dog bite is, depending upon the viral load, how much virus is injected into your bloodstream through the bite, and how much uh, the site of bite, that will determine how fast the disease can come up. Research has established that children are at risk here as these rabid animals bite them in areas close to their central nervous system. Dr. Anthony Enimel says this is the reason much attention must be paid to children. 
when a dog scratches or bites you or a cat which is rabid licks your wound the younger the child the more if the dogs are height when the dog scratches the dog is likely to scratch the upper part of the child right. so the chances of the virus traveling to the, the the head the brain to cause the problem is faster than an older person who the dog is likely to scratch the legs it takes time the viruses must travel through the skin dermal to get into the brain and cause the problem children are at risk because they are short and they are the level where the dogs can get closer to the head and therefore they can progress to disease faster. The virus's entry into the central nervous system of the victim means their chances of survival are slim. There is no hope again. Experts say, however, the spread of the rabies virus can be stopped even before a victim is rushed to hospital. The Ashanti Regional Veterinary Boss, Dr. Kofi Kwansin Filson says there are some basic steps to be followed to achieve that. Any time that you are bitten by this any animal, the first thing you do, get, quickly get soap and water. Clean water and soap. Wash the wound, wherever, tolerate wherever, wherever the, 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 the bite is or the wound is. The reason is that you are trying, you are removing the saliva infested with virus. Remove it. Once you remove it and you're able to remove even a bit of it, then that means the potency of the uh, the virus that have entered the wound has been reduced. Mm -hmm. Then you rush to the nearest, nearest uh, medical mm -hmm. facility. Then let them know that, that you were bitten by a dog or you were scratched by a dog. Most of the time they go and then the medical facility will capture it as just a, a wound or a scratch or a snake bite or something. Let, the, let it be established. Let the people know that it is uh, a dog that beats you. For Dr. George Sendami, the treatment protocol does not end here. person who has been bitten by a dog, after washing, irrigating the area, they must, yes, depending on if it's infected or not, prescribe antibiotics. If the person has not been vaccinated with tetanus for the past 10 years, must have a tetanus shot. But again, that is not the definitive treatment. The person must have the rabies vaccine if this dog has not been vaccinated or if this dog is a stray and you cannot locate it let me say if this is a dog that we cannot trace we don't have any information the person must be given the rabies vaccine it does not depend on the size of the wound and i think maybe that is the problem sometimes it's just a little scratch it's just a little so um they just leave it the person must be prescribed with a rabies vaccine at asante akimagogo where rabies cases arrive dr samuel J. The medical director in charge of their main hospital, that is Dagogo Presbyterian Hospital, says they don't joke with this protocol. Once a patient is bitten and reports, immediately we arrange with the patient's uh, the veterinary officer to examine the dog. We do collaboration. Immediately we have to send a uh, call the vet officer arrange for him to have a look at the dog. Then he will examine, he will be taking care of the dog to examine. At the same time, we will start with some initial treatment. We will just assume that the dog could be rabid. That's right. So if a dog, uh, somebody comes, first of all we ask, is the dog there? If you say yes, we ask quickly to inquire from the owner of the dog if the dog has been vaccinated, whether yes or no, we want to see a vaccination certificate. In case they can't produce it, immediately we are ready with the vet surgeon to observe the dog. But we start some treatment for the patient, particularly the anti tetanus and possibly the anti rabies vaccine. How the wound is managed in a health facility can either prevent the rabies virus from spreading fast or push victims into their early grave, no matter how big and deep the wound is. Dr. Anthony Enimel says there must be no attempt to cover it. If you close it, you are making room for the viruses to spread faster. Oh. Yeah, and again, there are possible infections that you got a dog may not only have the, 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 the viruses on them, but they may have other infections as well. Right. If you leave it, naturally, air itself is, 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 it has the ability to to, to promote healing. So the chances of the infection spreading in the wound that is closed 
makes it more. And again, most of the rules are not that uh, such that you must necessarily suture yeah. it. They are often not very deep wound. And even if they are puncture wounds, the solution is not to close the puncture because you make room for either anaerobic organisms to survive easily and they can be infected and make the spread faster than when you leave it open. The World Health Organization states that the rabies disease is mainly transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected dog. This is widespread in low-income countries like Ghana that have little or no domestic and stray dog management or vaccination programs. Scientists have also established that a bite or a scratch from a rabid animal is not the only means the virus can be passed on to humans. Those who eat any game, they can be at risk. At this, at the point of the preparation, because what happens is that the virus normally thrives or moves in, in the, on the nerves, in the nerves, and you know every part of any, I'll say, mama has this nervation yeah. almost up. So in the process of chopping it up, you know, when the rabies virus is in the nervous system and in some, some place, even in the saliva system and the digestive system, when you are preparing it in your hands, you have some cuts on your hand, the virus will quickly get in and then travel along the nervous system. And then the eventual thing will be the full-blown rabies. And once the rabies gets to the head, and then the signs come out, then uh, you know you are going because no, there no medication, no therapy can halt it. So the danger is in the preparation. But when, when you boil it, and this and that, it kills the, 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 the virus. Again, be extremely vigilant so no rabid animal lets any broken surface on your body. That is the caution from Dr. Boy Kikimoto. Oh, that one you easily get. You get it because it's. That is what they need. The very cell cannot enter a, a skin which is not broken. So once it is transmitted by saliva, and that rabid dog licks that area, by all means, you get the infection. I was still the mother of the young dog, had a mental problem, and passed it on to the puppy. The World Health Organization has identified mass dog vaccination as the solution to the rabies menace. But until affected countries gather the necessary resources to embark on this exercise, it is only ideal that owners of especially dogs take personal responsibility and vaccinate them against rabies. Experts, however, say, depending on how the anti-rabies vaccine is preserved, it may or may not work. Dr. Anthony Enimero explains how that can happen. I've witnessed instances where somebody sent the dog to be vaccinated. Um, he had to wait for a long time. Then a supposed worker came with a needle and a syringe in the pocket. So as if I am locodemously going to vaccinate your dog and you pay me a fee. Mm -hmm. Now it turned out that look, that the vaccine should be what you call, you have what you call the cold chain. It should be below a certain temperature to be efficacious. Mm -hmm. Now, look at our weather. It's itself, temperature is high. So if you expose this vaccine to high temperature, yes, it will still be a vaccine in the name, mm -hmm. but the active ingredient might have been destroyed such that it will not protect that dog against rabies. So you think you are vaccinated, you probably might have genuinely gone for the necessary processes but if the efficacy of the vaccine is low then you are not going to achieve the purpose and the dog can still become rabid you see but on main, on mainly to the owner he might have thought that i have vaccinated my dog but i hadn't taken effect so the quality of the vaccine who is in charge what a frightening revelation do you remember where the veterinarian took the vaccine from the last time you went to vaccinate your dog was it in a fridge or a cold box and even with the recent power outages that hits the whole country, what is the guarantee that all dogs vaccinated within that period got efficacious vaccines? Dr. Denis Lai has some fears. For most vaccines, between 4 degrees and 8 degrees Celsius, that's what you would usually have in a normal refrigerator that has not been opened frequently. Now, we all know about doom saw and the other things. So if you have vaccines stocked in places where they don't have standby generators, for example, 
effectively, once it gets out of that temperature range, you can't guarantee the, the efficacy of that vaccine. Again, no scientific study has been done to, to find out whether the few places where these are available, they are potent or not. Though you may have vaccinated your dog, Dr. Boyki Kimoto wants you to pay particular attention to your animal and see if it exhibits any of these behaviors. Sometimes they even chew stones, they can bite a, a tree, they can bite the, the stem of a tree, they can attack any, any object that stands on their way because that, that disease creates some kind of fear in them. So any other thing that is standing by them, they always think that there's, uh, the person wants to uh, attack them, so they will attack you first. Secondly, you can shine a light, like this light on me, on the face. You know, you see that the dog will always try to hide the face from the light. So you just put a touchlight on the uh, eyes of the dog. You just turn the, the eyes away. If you give it water, it cannot drink the water. So just basic in the house. These are some of the things you can also test for your dog to see whether it has rabies or not. We can give instances where children have died because of wrong identity. I mean, in a particular family that we got to know, the child supposedly was bitten by a dog. Mm. Uh, there were more than one dogs in that family, but there was a certificate covering almost all of them. One dog? Yes. One certificate for so all? So probably the owner might have vaccinated one, giving birth to others, and there's one certificate was used to cover for all of them. And this was about three, four years ago. Dad came to die. So we didn't know the status of the dog that was bitten. Now, the issue here is, if the child is bitten by a rabbit dog, and there's false impression that this dog was vaccinated, activities or actions we should put in place to prevent the child from dying are not put in place. But the assumption is, oh, the dog was vaccinated. Dog has really messed up my life. It has caused me a lot of pain. I live here with my sister, but she's dead and gone, all because of a dog. I hate dogs now. We bathed together, ate together, and did everything together. I have never been the same since he died. I have lost my world, and I'm always sad. It gets worse any time I see his mates dressed up going to school. I believe the dog got possessed by a bad spirit. I would challenge anyone who doubts it. Somebody intentionally did that to the dog. Most of the people who die from rabies die not because they did not report at a medical facility very early. They died because of scarcity of the anti-rabies vaccine, even in the hospitals, as Dr. Samuel J tells me. Because of costs, and uh, it's not like a frequent episode so if you bring it in and it's expiring and yet it's costly so we don't have it at the hospital what we normally have is the tetanus and then the ministry try to provide anti-rabies vaccines but even that is not always available so normally when they are bitten you are really that they say have direct treats they are supposed to go to the regional medical stores get some for us it's not always that I would say we have them available, but usually we try to keep some available so that we can actually begin the first vaccination and then the scheduled ones we follow up with other facilities in case we don't have sufficient um, to complete the vaccination schedules. So the availability sometimes is a challenge. It is not only a challenge at the Agogo Presbyterian Hospital, at the Confonochi Teaching Hospital, a major referral facility serving all three regions in the north, as well as the Bronga Hafo and Ashanti regions, the anti rabies vaccine is not available. Dr. Dennis Lai, head of the hospital's public health unit, confirms. But the truth is that we have a bigger problem, which is that they are not even available, even in, in government health facilities. So that's a big problem because 
people get the animal bites, they come to the health facility, they don't have the right treatment because the vaccine is not available. And it's, it's in most major hospitals, including mine. So it's a big problem. In a case like this, the patient is handed a prescription to go in search of the anti-rabies vaccine. A recent study by Dr. Denis Laye on the availability of the vaccine on the market revealed something shocking. This survey looked at vaccine availability and then there's one we call the immunoglobulin, which is also like a vaccine, but where immediately the dog bite is gotten, that can also be given. And we found that mo we surveyed about 22 pharmacies in Kumasi, around Konfanochi Teaching Hospital, around the Kumasi South Regional Hospital, and also pharmacies in the Central Business District of Kumasi. And only one had, and even that one, had only one stock of the immunoglobulin available. None of them had a vaccine. This is the reason we must all be serious about getting rid of rabies in this country, since human vaccines to protect victims are not even available. Dr. Jocelyn Dami of the Kolobu Teaching Hospital has this advice for his colleague health workers. If I give a prescription to a patient and I say, go and buy this drug and they can't find it, I have not done my work well. I just prescribe it and the patient does not have it. Does not help. I must know I'm working in this hospital. Where can I find a rabies vaccine? That is my work. So that when I give the prescription to the patient, I say, go to this facility or otherwise. And this must happen not just in Accra, this must not happen not just in Kumasi, but everywhere in the Upper East, in Upper West, in Central Region. Every healthcare provider must know where to find the rabies vaccine. And it breaks my heart when I hear that anybody has died from rabies. And where it is available, victims can barely afford it. Dr. Bashiri Boyki Kimoto fears many victims will die if the price is not subsidized. It's about 600 Ghana cities. And at our international meeting, I said, look, we don't have to make rabies look like it's a rich man's disease. You see? And don't forget that these dogs, they don't buy the rich people. They don't buy the middle class people. Sometimes the school children, the aged, the old men who cannot run. So we should make it affordable in such a way that people can actually, you know, purchase it in, even when it is available. Because even when it is available and you cannot buy it, it is just, it's the same as not being available. You know, even when it was in abundance, the worst thing said was that some of those working in the hospitals carry these vaccines out. And even there was some day uh, I had to tr uh, investigate a case and I went to Abuso Kai and got the human rabies vaccine. But it was in the so just like any other drug in the polythene bag. And I was shocked. But that I was in abundance. Now it is not even there. The World Health Organization recommends these three key actions to dealing with the rabies menace, making human vaccines and antibodies affordable, ensuring people who get bitten receive prompt treatment, and mass dog vaccinations to tackle the viral disease at its source. In the advanced country, they are not making too much noise because the system works. That's right. You cannot build dogs without taking them for immunization. So the point is, why do we have the laws but not implementing them? It should go beyond just lift services, but we should make sure that, yes, people can have their own dogs because dogs will also reproduce. But there should be systems such that you cannot keep dogs at home without sending them for the necessary processes to be done. So that is on the side of policy, which I am trusting that the necessary policy makers will put this in place. Sometimes when the problem is in developing countries, nobody really looks at it. And I, I also would be fair to say that we as a country have also not really looked at the issue of rabies critically. So this is a very good forum and I'm hoping that um, we'll get more action, not just words. We should invest a lot of money in the public health, uh, you know, uh, and food safety division of veterinary service because we need to make sure that diseases don't pass on from animals to human beings. And there are over 3,558 of those diseases. So it is better we do that other than maybe building more clinics, uh, this and because the whole world is moving from treatment into prevention. So why not let support the public health structures so that they will make sure that social mobilization and those communication is carried to the people to prevent diseases. If you get attacked by a dog, what do you do? They will say, lie like a log, be still. Because yes, you should be still. 
you should if you are knocked down you should lie very flat you must face down and act like a log because if you show any sign the dog may misinterpret this as an aggressive behavior and will actually attack you so it's important to be very still when you actually get confronted do not run away do not scream the most important thing is to avoid but if it happens that you are not able to avoid you must be very still in the presence of the dog if you have not been a victim of rabies you might consider this as a fiction but people whose relatives died screaming and barking like dogs after bites are joining the crusade to fight rabies the government must act to protect you and i from this death threat on your part just get your dog vaccinated at the right place this has been seth kwame Boateng.